Is it visible? Yes, ma'am, visible, ma'am. Perfect. Thank you. So, um, so in today's session, we will look at two important things. One will be to understand the specific issues and concerns regarding children with disabilities in disaster contexts, and also to look at how we can specifically address these specific needs and capacities in um, CCDRR. Now, the reason we're talking about children and children with disabilities, like we know that children are, there are many different, um, like children come from different backgrounds, and there are many different issues depending on the background that children come from. So we acknowledge all these different backgrounds, but today's session will look more into looking at children with disabilities. So in this session, we will look at. Um, can you see this slide? Next slide. Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Thank you. So in this session, we will look at a few things. We will look at um, four things. One is. We will look at what is disability and how it is defined, especially in the Indian context. What are the different types of disabilities? We will look at the impact of disasters on children with disabilities, and we will look specifically at disability inclusive CCDRR and a little bit about our language when we talk on disability. And um, given the time, we will look at a question and answers. Uh, we will definitely take up question and answers. So what is disability? It is uh, the, the moment we think about disability, what is the image that comes to everyone? You can use the chat box to uh, share your uh, thoughts about it. Yeah, so when we look at disability, disability is, uh, um, it's it's the moment we think of disability, the picture that comes to our mind is somebody has a difficulty to walk, somebody might have a difficulty to hear, somebody might have a difficulty to see or to or is behaving differently. But disability is a little beyond that. Disability is a social construct. It is it based it is based on some impairments like difficulty to walk and maybe to talk or to communicate but what is really really important for us to understand is that um is sorry somebody is asking for an annotation um so what is really important for us to ask uh, to understand is that um, there are impairments and there is an interaction with some barriers that we face in environment and due to attitudes. And because of these barriers, there is a difficulty in participating in society on an equal basis with others. So I'll explain this a little more in the next slides. So for example, for example, so disability is a very, very diverse group. As you can see, there is a group which is looking, which is which may be categorized as having physical impairment or physical difficulty, which means I have difficulty in moving, I have difficulty in using my hands. There is visual impairment, which is I have difficulty in seeing, and because of difficulty in seeing, I will have I could have difficulty in moving. There is speech and hearing uh, difficulty, so I can I have difficulty in listening or in hearing what you're saying, or if even some people have both speech, they are not able to speak, they have difficulty in speaking. And we have a fourth category is, which is categorized as intellectual or psychosocial develop, um, disabilities. This is a very, very large category right now. It's just um, here. There are a lot of uh, impairments that come into this. You must have heard of autism, autism spectrum, learning disability. Um, so it basically is talking about children having developmental delays. So a child who, who might have an age, a chronological age of say five years old, but actually development um, in terms of maturity is 
maybe six months old or something is not able to lift is just it has been lifting the head and all of that so um do you know um in terms of uh, categorization in india um how many how many categories we have uh, as per the um act 2016 act i am not able to see the chat let me just see the chat one minute You can put a number. Do you have any numbers? Anybody? No? Okay. So basically we have 21 categories as per um, the act. Um, so, uh, and this is, this also can be, it, be, it can be recategorized into these four broad headings. But then there are subcategories, which is why, according to the RPWD Act, we have 21 categories that have been identified. Now, going back again to explain this whole concept of disability, you, you might look at two important factors. <clears throat> One is the personal factors. You see this blue block, which is personal factors. So when we talk of personal factors, it is what I just told you about that person having difficulty to see or to walk or to uh, hear or um, behavior issues. And you see the orange one, you see that is called the environmental factors. So this is talking about the different barriers. So it can be physical barrier, like um, I have to go to school. I am not able to walk. I use a wheelchair. So my school has a nice ramp, but my from my house to the school, it is a sandy road. So how do I get there? So this is a physical barrier. Or if my classroom is on the second floor and I uh, have like I have polio in my legs, so I have difficulty to climb up the stairs. So then that is again a physical barrier. Then you have attitudinal barriers. Attitudinal barriers is a lot of people will think, oh, this child will, the child does, he cannot do anything. She cannot do anything. So those are attitudinal barriers. Sometimes parents are also very overprotective. So they will say, no, 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 my child will fall. Um, so I don't want the child to play. So those are some um, attitudinal barriers. Then you have communication barriers. So for example, um, I can't suppose uh, your information, your classroom, you have uh, the, the main learning methodology is by talking. Uh, so then a person not able to hear will find it very difficult to understand what the classroom is talking, what is happening in the classroom. So these are the different barriers that occur in society. And when these interact, when both the personal factor and the environmental barriers interact, that is what determines our ability to do our activities of daily living. For example, um, eating, bathing, moving around, going to school, and that is what really determines our disability. So for example, eating. Now, maybe my hand my hand has a uh, if i have difficulty in using my my uh, my hands but there are many people who do their eating using their legs so it does not so what i'm trying to say is that uh, that though there is a problem with the hand there is a different way that i am able to do my activities of daily living so that is um, so, so basically disability is a very dynamic concept. It is not that, okay, because the person has polio, um, the person has, a, is, you know, can, is a person with disability and cannot do anything. So we need to really understand, um, the barriers and the personal capacities, and then that is what determines our, the dis disabling situation. <clears throat> so moving on, moving on. Um, I'd like to go through a small example of how personal factors, environmental factors uh, really interact and what is the impact on its daily living activities. So let's look at this girl, Usha. So Usha is an eight-year-old girl. Now, she has an ear infection. So you can see a personal factor. She has some ear infection. Then she has, uh, because of that, she, ha she cannot hear. And because, and the, in terms of environmental factors, you see 
that she is living with her family. Her father is a farmer. She is going to school, but in her school, you see that um, that and her teacher makes her sit in front of the class. Why does she make her te teacher sit in front of the class? So that because her, he, she has difficulty hearing, if she is right at the back of the class, she will not be able to. Um, learn at all. So the teacher is able to give some sort of individualized attention. But now with COVID and online classes, she's finding it very difficult to study and follow some of um, the, the classes that are happening on TV, but she's not able to follow because it is all coming as verbal and her parents are not literate enough to really help her. So, and she's now helping she's now uh, her mother is asking her more and more to help with the household work so see how the environment and the personal factors are interacting <coughs> excuse me and that is determining the participation or social participation or her disability <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> so you can see that now she has limited access to information she has limited educational outcomes and even sometimes if you look at leisure, she finds that, okay, people are laughing at me. I can't play with them. So there are limitations in terms of accessing leisure activities. Now let's take another quick example of Asif. Asif is 15 years old. Personal factors, if you see, he has paralysis of the leg. If you see in terms of functional, he's unable to walk. He uses a wheelchair. And if you look at the environment, the environment shows that 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 the, the child club meetings, you must have heard in the child centric DRR, which Balu sir shared yesterday, that there are many, many activities that child centered DRR um, do. So then there is there is a child club in their school. And this these clubs are happening in the school. His school has a ramp, but the road to his house um, and to the school has a lot of sand. So he's not able to go to the meetings and then the other children in the club they did a risk assessment in school and then they decided no he is vulnerable and uh, he cannot do anything we will help him but he was feeling no i can i i want to do training on first aid i want to um i want to understand uh, because last time when the cyclone came i was the one who was watching tv and told my parents that look in this many days, the cyclone is coming and these are the preparations that we need to take. So I, I feel that I can contribute. Why should they think that I have a vulnerability? In fact, because I knew that the cyclone was coming, I was able to tell my parents and we were able to go to a safe place before the cyclone hit my village. So these are lots of, uh, these are lots of, uh, th this is what the environment is talking about and the way that the environment uh, and the personal factors interact again determines our social participation. So moving on, moving on, um, do I, sorry, I'm getting a message to provide an uh, annotation. Do I provide that? Nazia, can you help me? No, ma'am, some participants unknowingly doing no need to okay. do. Please carry on. Okay. Request okay. all the participants, please do not send any annotation request and do not touch your device. Keep away and listen to the session. Please over to you, ma'am. Thank you. So moving on, let's look at some of the impacts of um, disasters on uh, children with disabilities. Now, if you look at children with disabilities even before the disaster context. So let us look at the 2011 census of India. Now it is 2000, today it is 2022. So the data of course is old, but still this is the only data that we have. So as per the 2011 census, almost 20 lakh children in the age group zero to six have some sort of disability which is basically one in every 100 child in the age group of zero to six. And if you look at the WHO uh, uh, you know, uh, guidelines and WHO figures, they estimate that one in every 10 child <clears throat> has a disability. 
Of course, the WHO definition of disability is slightly different from our Indian uh, definition of disability. And also, sometimes a lot of um, uh, disability is not visible and it is not identified. Another important point is 61% of children between the age group 5 to 9 are attending educational institutions. Now, it is good that 61% is attending educational institution. But what is the learning outcome? Do we know? Unfortunately, the learning outcomes has, has been very poor. And, I, and you can imagine in COVID situation, what this, um, this will be. It would be even, even worse. And if you look at children with multiple disabilities, when we look at multiple disability, it means that I have more than one type of impairment. So it could be that I have a physical impairment. I'm not able to walk, but along with not being able to walk, I have difficulty with speech and hearing. Or um, I, uh, I have deaf blindness, which is I'm not able to uh, hear and speak. I'm also not able to see. So almost 54% of children with multiple disabilities have never attended educational institutions. And 50% of children with mental illness also have never attended educational institutions. With the Sarva Sikhya Abhiyan and a lot of boost and lot of uh, focus given for children with disabilities, enrollment has gone up among children with disabilities. So you'll find almost 100% enrollment in educational institutes for a lot of children with disabilities also. But then in terms of, uh, and, and uh, there are many other uh, schemes, it depends on the state of course, there are uh, the, um, the inclusive education volunteers, there are block resource teachers, all of these that really, really work hard on reaching out to children with disabilities and ensuring education for them. But it is not an easy task. It requires a lot of um, time and it requires a lot of time. And we are, we are improving a lot. We have improved a lot, but we still have a lot uh, more to go. What is very, very tragic um, is that, you know, we tend to think that um, a person with disability cannot work. What work will do? You can, he or she can't work, no. But if you see in terms of um, in every one in every 25 child with disability between the age, below the age group of 14 is working. So child labor is also there among children with disabilities, and that is really, really sad. Um, these are some of the figures, uh, and I, I know most of you are from Andhra Pradesh. I don't unfortunately have a, a specific figure uh, for uh, uh, children with disabilities in Andhra. But what I can tell you is Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Maharashtra, West Bengal, all these states together, unfortunately, Kate, um, have almost 50% of the burden of children with disabilities. So this is saying that we are with that in these states that the maximum number of children with disabilities are found in these states. In disaster context, so we understood that already children with disabilities are vulnerable because educational outcomes are poor, uh, they, they, there's a lot of risk to abuse, etc. But when we look at disaster context, you'll find that children with disabilities are disproportionately affected. Their mortality rate, when I talk of mortality rate, it is the death rate can be as high as 80.4% even in normal times. So that means the, 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 the death rate even in normal times among children with disabilities tends to be high. And children with disabilities are three to four times more likely to be victims of sexual violence. Now, this is really, really, uh, again, a very a point of a lot of concern because a lot of children don't even understand that they are being abused. So only when you are when you know that you are being abused, can you make a complaint? Can you give a can you share that? OK, that this is happening to me. Like Balu sir said yesterday about good touch, bad touch. How do you explain to a child that this is a good touch, bad touch when the child has a hearing impairment or has some intellectual disability? Sometimes they don't. And so we have to find out different ways of talking about 
um, about these things, about making them aware, ensuring that there's a safe space for children with disabilities. Very, very specifically, when we look at children with disabilities in, uh, and in disaster and disaster risk, the, the biggest you will remember uh, Valo sir showed the video of you know the separation between with families. That's very very true even for children with disabilities. So the idea is we should ensure that caregivers or family members are not separated from children with disabilities. So during the uh, file-in response, during the hoodhood response, during the all these uh, during all these uh, cyclones. I'm talking about cyclones um, because I I know the experience on that. Um, the Department for uh, Women and Child Development, they made a, a specific um, uh, circular, went, the, went out to all the collectors saying that, okay, when you evacuate the people to push safe shelters, ensure that children with disabilities, especially those having autism spectrum, learning disability, intellectual disability are not separated from their family members or from their caregivers. So those, and there were many other points that were given, but what I'm trying to say is that the government of India is also very conscious of this and is also has guidelines in place and best practices in place. The other most important is loss of access to assistive devices and medication. Now you might've seen in a flood, in a cyclone, um, the, the assistive device, the person is wearing a hearing aid, the person is has a blind stick, the person might have a wheelchair, might have a crutch. So the house, the they leave the house, right? When they when you leave the house, you've left some things behind. So some of the things like a tricycle, um, when the house is damaged, the wall collapses, the floor, roof collapses, your assistive devices also get damaged. And when they get damaged, to replace it becomes very, very challenging. And it takes time. It's not that we they, it is not replaced. Like normally you have after three years, you can apply for a replacement. But after a, any kind of a disaster, the government, a lot of uh, organization and even the government uh, replaces it, but it takes time. So for that period, that person is completely dependent on other people to be doing their activities of daily living, and and that is that increases their disability. And people are like, yeah, we have to give food, shelter, clothing, but a wheelchair is not not uh, given priority. Whereas they don't understand that the wheelchair is the person's leg, and it is a priority for the person. Same with medic medication. So sometimes when we are in these cyclone shelters or flood shelters, and the uh, we have to stay there for some time, you'll find that uh, the even even in COVID situation, the medical support was disrupted. Now a child having epilepsy requires medication on a regular basis. Now immediately, if the medication for epilepsy is stopped, then the uh, the the events or the epileptic epileptic bouts increases and that can increases the damage to the brain. So there are many such uh, dis, di, uh, difficulties that happen for children, uh, children with disabilities and children with disabilities have a great difficulty in accessing food, um, wash, uh, child protection, health. Um, so let me talk a little bit about especially COVID what happened a very, very sad example um, in the first wave. So in the first wave, uh, there was a child, 12 years old, um, dependent on the care on the caregiver, the parent, and because the parent had COVID, the first parent was um, taken to a quarantine center, and this child was alone at home. Now, in usually in a rural setting, there is a lot of uh, support system around. People will take care of the other ch of the child from the neighboring houses, but in urban setting, that kind of mechanisms are very are, tend to be weak, tend to be weak. And this child was without food, without care for the entire duration of that, of the parent being in the, uh, in the quarantine center and the child died. So that was a very, very, it's a very sad situation that should have happened, that should not have happened. And these are some of the issues that, uh, because the child had an had a, um, had a developmental delay and um, these are the difficulties, couldn't manage on, uh, on himself. So that is what happened. Talking about uh, unequal or access to education. So you can see that it, as we have seen that education has been very badly hit. 
some children and we are saying that okay online education is not working not everybody has access to phones not everybody has access to uh, smartphones or even uh, like some of the states they are having uh, education happening on tv radio but all of this um, it, it you need the additional support that was being provided in us in the educational institutes that's completely disrupted. So their educational attainments, their ed educational outcomes has, has taken a severe beating. And the first thing, unfortunately, like in disaster situation, what happens is we use schools also as shelters. So that's the first thing that that is affected. So the children's playgrounds, the children's um, place of uh, studies, all of that is affected. And um, when we do child centric disaster risk reduction, even in that space, children with disabilities tend to be um, tend not to be invited or not to be included. And as I said, because of different barriers, as I mentioned in the first thing that there are several barriers that people face and um, and we tend to look at children with disabilities as fragile or as objects of charity or power or poor thing. I have to do something like that. Nobody thinks that the children with disability have a right, have the capacity, and can do. So that is what child-centric disaster risk reduction is about. So when we talk of disability inclusive child-centric disaster risk reduction, we are looking at considering the rights and needs of children with disabilities in risk reduction actions. And here we're looking at capacities and contributions of children with disabilities in the process as a whole. So, moving on, and to do this, to do this, uh, what is available with us? We have legal frameworks. We have the policies, we have the legal frameworks, both at international level as well as national level. So at the international level, you have the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. You have the CRC, that is the Convention for Rights of, of the Child. You have what we call as the Sendai Framework. And at the national level, you have the Rights for Persons with Disabilities Act 2016. And in the Rights for Persons with uh, Disabilities Act 2016, I would like to really highlight some key points that very, very categorically and explicitly talk about inclusion of people with disabilities in disaster risk reduction. One is that the state shall ensure equal protection and safety for people with disabilities, that the National Disaster Authority and the State Disaster Management Authority shall take appropriate measures to ensure inclusion of persons with disabilities as defined in clause E of section 2 of Disaster Management Act 2005. Now, clause E basically talks about, you remember in your in the last two days, you um, Ranjan sir had talked about the different um, phases of disaster risk management. So he talked about preparedness, he talked about mitigation, he talked about uh, uh, prevention. So in all of these actions, we need to ensure inclusion of people with disabilities in all of this. At the district level, the disaster, district disaster management authority has a mandate to maintain records of persons with disabilities at the district level and hence to take suitable measures to inform so that we are able to evacuate, we are able to ensure relief reaches them, we are able to ensure safety of people with disabilities. Fourth point that at the state commissioner in a, is required that there is a provision that in re restoration and re re reconstruction accessibility requirement of persons with disabilities is taken into account so if you go to your uh, to the disaster district disaster management plans like uh, go to the site andhra pradesh site you look at shrikakulam uh, district disaster uh, preparedness plan you'll find under one section under construction you will find requirements of gender and people with disabilities is taken into account. So what I'm trying to say is that the act is there, the plans are there, the will is there. The question is how? We also have very uh, strong guidelines, which is the NDMA guidelines on disaster man in disability inclusive disaster risk reduction. I'd encourage you to have a look at it. 
it has a very interesting framework where it has categorically and very clearly defined that these are the responsibilities of the different, say at the block level, this is what can happen, what should happen, at the district level, what should happen, at the panchayat level, what should happen. So, the, like I said, then the question is how? So, a very simple, a very simple mechanism is what we have. What is that mechanism? We call it a twin track approach. Now, when you look, talk of twin track, twin track basically is like a train, uh, a railway uh, line. So, you know, you, the railway line has two track. So, one track is looking at actions targeting the person. So, we are having one action looking at how do we empower the person with disability. And the second track is how do we make our systems inclusive for people with disabilities. Now, both these tracks need to go together. One without the other will not give you the best results. It will give results, but it will not give you the best results. If we had both tracks going, then it gives us the best results. So, for example, for example, in CCDR, in CCDR, we have on, if you see on the left side, I've talked about mainstream services. So, suppose there is a school based risk risk assessment that is happening or a contingency plan that is happening. Now, it is good to understand to gather data on disability. So, let us have data. Now, data um, is of utmost importance because we don't have data and with data only can we plan without data. You will not have budgets without data. You will not have a plan, a proper plan. So data is important. How many people with disabilities are there? How many children with disabilities are there? What is their specific requirement? So unless you have this information, you can't do a risk um, assessment properly. Second, early warning. Now, early warning to make it inclusive. How do we make it inclusive? What first we look at what are the ways we are providing early warning? Is it just one? We are just giving uh, micing, or are we also sharing it with uh, through you know written format? Are we sharing it through telephones? In the telephone, when we are shared, you this time you might have seen a lot of messages came on the phone you know, through WhatsApp groups, etc. So you have both posters as well as audio. So basically, looking at multiple formats. Now, if uh, then again with COVID, a lot of social media was also used. Now, the um, the other thing to to be to understand is who is giving the message to whom. So it could be the family member, so the parents, the caregivers, giving to a person with disability, or the child bringing the message to the family. So looking at the different formats of providing early warning messages. So a lot of like a lot of uh, different methods are there. So using multiple formats, simulation and mock drills, ensuring uh, ensuring participation, uh, basically ensuring participation of children with disabilities. Uh, can you? Uh, somebody is asking for annotation. Okay. Um, so yesterday uh, you might have seen Balu sir's uh, video on the Bangladesh. Uh, experience with children with disabilities. You saw they did a simulation and a mock drill. Now that is very, very important. And how do we ensure children with disabilities participate in those mock drills? So they not just as victims, but also as people who would be part of some say task force, say a child with disability is part of a first aid task force, or um, the children know how to do a search rescue, which is inclusive of people with disabilities. I, I know that there are a lot of people from the police and um, so maybe some of you have done civil defense training. So what we did with the civil defense is we looked at the different impairment categories and we saw, okay, when we look at the different search rescue mechanisms, say for example, rescue from height, rescue from uh, water, rescue from smoke, um, how do we ensure that persons with disabilities are rescued safely? So the go, throw, row, all of that, when we do search rescue from water, how, what is it? What, what are the considerations that we need to take? 
so it, whenever the opportunity comes i can definitely uh, whoever is interested uh, go more into that uh, if you want but it is it is something to be taken into account that when you do the fireman lift when you do the you know two man lift or three whatever whatever the lifts that you decide uh, is important and how it can be used for even search rescue for children with disabilities and people with disabilities both um, ensuring shelter and their facilities are accessible. So identifying that, okay, when children identify that these are the shelters, this is where I will be safe. So safety is very, very important along with accessibility. Accessibility means not just that I can reach the place. Okay, I can reach the shelter, but can I use the shelter? Can I go to the bathroom? Can I move around inside the shelter? Can I am I, am I uh, safe in that place? So it is not just um, uh, reaching; it is also using that shelter, and it is also feeling safe in that shelter. So as a child with disability, am I um, safe? Then other activities can include okay training of teachers of stakeholders on like we are doing right now. We are having a training on inclusion and disability, and planning how education can be continuous, that there is no disruption. When we look at some specialized services like the other track, suppose, then we can have targeted intervention for children with disabilities. So you can have training to children with disabilities on disaster risk reduction. Um, you can have uh, assistive devices. There are a lot of children who lack assistive devices, so having a camp and understanding what their needs are. Making specific plans so um, we usually do the plans at a district level or at the community level or at the village level. But sometimes for a person with disability, we need um, plans that are linked to the house. So household plans linked to the community disaster risk reduction plans. And we might require like physical rehabilitation. Now, a lot of children say a person, child with um, with polio or a child with cerebral palsy. These are different conditions that a child has, and they require regular therapy. And this therapy is what really improves their physical um, abilities. It improves their social abilities. It improves their communication. It it improves a lot of. It reduces the disability. So ensuring that access to these functional rehabilitation service continues. For example, COVID, this is one of the areas that was very, very badly affected. So we really, really, uh, so a lot of children who were going for therapy, that this whole therapy was closed. And because of that, they're now back by so many years and going, going back to the, to what the level they had before COVID is going to take a long time. We can think of sign languages for uh, when we set up an early warning system. So it's like, for example, this time during COVID uh, in Odisha, what happened was that all TV announcements that were made had a sign language interpreter talking about that this is the, the these are the messages, these are the early warning. So we had the sign language interpreter information leaflets in Braille and most important is working with a caregiver of the person with disability. So very, very like we just went uh, very quickly about what are the possible things that we we can do. So to summarize, we need we should have good data. So we should try to collect data on uh, sex, age and type of disability because that is what will help us. We. We can look at different. So, for example, we say that during COVID, what happened was that um, the pension that uh, people with disabilities get that was uh, in advance, it was provided. So that is very good. Um, and in Andhra, you might know that um, the Manrega scheme works very well in terms of inclusion. Now, the pension is very small amount. But when people with disabilities are able to get access to um, the Narega schemes, this improves the this reduces their uh, you know the, the the chances of them going lower and lower into poverty. So Andhra Pradesh is in fact one of the best states uh, performing in terms of um, access to social security for disability. So that is something that all states should actually look into. Then um, 
in basically the the uh, the I think the 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 punchline is involve girls and boys with disabilities and their caregivers in DRR activities and um, ensure look at different like there are different um, there are different services available. So can we look at coordinating with those different services, whether it's the social welfare department, it is the uh, for rehabilitation or whatever it is, or different hospitals. And I th that that ends my um, my discussion on child centric disaster a disability inclusive child centric DRR. Um, very quickly, uh, let's look at some language related to disability. So, when we look at two statements, one is Sarah is disabled, or Sarah is a teacher, and she has a disability. So, is there a difference? The difference is that in the disability community, in the in the disability sector, what we're trying to say is let us use disability, uh, sorry, person first terminology. Disability is coming later because what we say is that okay, a person who has a wheelchair, a person who is deaf, a person with disability. But then again, there is uh, in India. So many states, so many languages. So the exact terminology differs from state to state. But in principle, we must ensure that there is respect when we address a person. It could be a person with disability, but there is respect. Not to call the child, hey, uh, like we have in Hindi, hey, khana, hey, langda. That, that's really abusive. That's, that's not something that we would uh, look at. So. Uh, looking at person first type of language. So when we look at person first type of language, this is what is usually used. There are some exceptions like uh, deaf person, autistic person. These are what are now uh, accepted. This is what people prefer to call themselves. We tend not to use disabled person because it's again disabled is coming. It doesn't describe the, um, the person. Handicapped is normally considered a negative terminology because it is describing barriers and people with disabilities are not just their barriers. Um, in fact, uh, uh, Handicap in International, though our name is Handicap International, we know that this is a negative thing. So we have changed our name to Humanity and Inclusion. But because of our legal uh, registration in the country, so we continue, unfortunately, to go by this uh, name. Differently abled is another terminology that is used, but it is it is like say it is a euphemism. It is uh, like saying, OK, um, uh, this person has a special gift so that the idea is that everybody has a special gift, whether it is a person with disability or um, is it even a, a person challenged is also um, implies barriers and it is not usually um, uh, used. The the language that is most globally used is a person first language. So I will close my uh, presentation here um, with just with the last uh, message that um, from the from the disability sector. Whenever we whenever we are working with children or with people with disabilities, there is one phrase that is always used. Nothing without us, um, nothing. Um, it's sorry. Nothing about us without us. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for such a nice session on explaining the uh, issues of differently abled uh, children and especially in the disaster situation. Now I may request the participants if you are having any questions, you may please kindly post in the chat box. Uh, let me just check the chat box. I request the participants if you are having any questions in the chat box, you may please. If you are having any questions, you may please post in the chat box.
uh, once again i thank any hands ma'am for uh, making it such a nice uh, session and as of now there is no any other questions so i think we may move on to the next session and uh, end of the second session if any questions are there you may please you are most welcome to answer here thank you so much ma'am uh, now let us move on to the next session now i may invite uh, ms nazia zai who is a junior resource officer at uh, child centric disaster risk reduction center national institute of disaster management to discuss about uh, the home to home school safety over to you thank you balu sir uh, andarki namaskaram andi uh, balu sir cheppinattu nenu national institute of disaster management lo junior research officer ga work chestunnanu ippudu manam home to home school safety gurinchi cheptunnam andi నేను వైఫై పైన కనెక్ట్ అయ్యాను నేను వీడియో స్టాప్ చేసి మాట్లాడతానండి థ్యాంక్ యూ సార్ బాలు సార్ మై వాయిస్ ఇస్ ఆడిబుల్ నా సార్ yes ma'am you are perfectly audible please go ahead thank you mervin please give the share option mervin Uh, Mr. Arvind, are you there? Yeah. Is my PPT is visible, sir? Yes, ma'am, visible. Please continue. కాంప్రహెన్సివ్ స్కూల్ సేఫ్టీ అండి స్కూల్ సేఫ్టీ హ్యాస్ బీన్ డిఫైన్ యాజ్ క్రియేటింగ్ ఎ సేఫ్ ఎన్విరాన్మెంట్ ఫర్ చిల్డ్రన్ స్టార్టింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ దేర్ హోమ్ టు దేర్ స్కూల్ అండ్ బ్యాక్ చిల్డ్రన్స్ ఇంటి దగ్గర నుంచి స్కూల్కి వెళ్ళి మళ్ళీ వెనక్కి ఇంటికి వచ్చే వరకు అంటే ఏమేమి జరుగుతాయి వాళ్ళు ట్రాన్స్పోర్టేషన్ నుంచి అలాగే స్కూల్లో ఒక సేఫ్ ఎన్విరాన్మెంట్ నుంచి నెక్స్ట్ ఇంటికి వచ్చిన తర్వాత వాళ్ళ యొక్క హోంవర్క్స్ అసైన్మెంట్ సైకలాజికల్గా కూడా వాళ్ళని హెల్దీగా చూసుకోవాల్సిన బాధ్యత మన రెస్పాన్సిబిలిటీ దట్ మీన్స్ సేఫ్టీ అండ్ సెక్యూరిటీ డ్యూరి డ్యూరింగ్ ట్రాన్స్పోర్టేషన్ అట్ స్కూల్ అండ్ అట్ హోమ్ దట్ మీన్స్ క్రియేషన్ ఆఫ్ ఎ సేఫ్ ఎన్విరాన్మెంట్ ఫర్ చిల్డ్రన్ దిస్ ఇంక్లూడ్ సేఫ్టీ ఫ్రమ్ ఎనీ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ అబ్యూజ్ అంటే ఇప్పుడు మ్యామ్ చెప్పారు కదా వల్నరబుల్ లాంగ్వేజ్ సమ్ పీపుల్ యూస్ చేస్తూ ఉంటారు నెక్స్ట్ వయోలెన్స్ హింస నుంచి సైకో సోషల్ ఇష్యూస్ మానసిక సామాజిక సమస్యల నుంచి అలాగే డిజాస్టర్ విపత్తుల నుంచి అది న్యాచురల్ ఆర్ మ్యాన్మేడ్ ఫైర్ అండ్ ట్రాన్స్పోర్టేషన్ నెక్స్ట్ దిస్ కాంప్రహెన్సివ్ స్కూల్ సేఫ్టీ కాంప్రహెన్సివ్ స్కూల్ సేఫ్టీ వన్ ఆఫ్ ది ఇంపార్టెంట్ టాపిక్ దేర్ ఆర్ మెయిన్లీ టూ ఆస్పెక్ట్స్ ఫస్ట్ వన్ ఈస్ creation of a safe environment for children children means the next generation this is one kind of inculcation of a culture because children are the future generation if they have that culture of type of safety only they can they will become a politicians doctors engineers and professionals in many fields so if they have that culture of this inculcation of safety will cover in all aspects okay in comprehensive school safety there are three pillars first pillar one is safe learning facilities it explains how we create a safe environment for children for their education not only for children for teachers and non teaching staff also main ga manaki ee comprehensive uh, school safety lo three pillars unnayandi first one vache sariki safe learning facilities deentlo mana main ante uh, children's ki teachers ki non teaching staff ki 
ఒక సేఫ్ ఎన్విరాన్మెంట్ ఎలా క్రియేట్ చేయాలి అనేది మనకి పిల్లర్ వన్ తెలియజేస్తుంది నెక్స్ట్ పిల్లర్ టూ through this presentation we will definitely learn about how we can prepare a school disaster management plan manamu ee pillar 2 dwara school disaster management plan anedi ela tayar chestamo anedi meeru ee presentation vinna tarvata mee antata meeru tayar chesukogalugutaru pillar 3 risk reduction and resilience education it covers many aspects many activities related to resilience creation and risk reduction aspect so that we also explain what is the purpose improve children's equal and safe access to quality inclusive and integrated basic education this is one of the most important purpose monitor and evaluate progress of initiative that reduce disaster and conflict risks increase availability of and access to hazard related evidence promote risk reduction and resilience in the education sector this also include clear focus in major international agreements strengthen coordination and network for resilience here uh, convergence between the department is more important అన్ని డిపార్ట్మెంట్స్ కలిసి వర్క్ చేస్తేనే మన డిజాస్టర్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ అనేది వర్క్ అనేది వర్కౌట్ అయ్యిద్ది ఇప్పుడు ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఇప్పుడు మనం ఒక ట్రైనింగ్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ చేస్తున్నాం అంటే నాట్ ఓన్లీ ఎన్ఐడిఎం ఒక్కటే చేయట్లేదు ఈ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఇన్ అసోసియేషన్ విత్ హ్యాండిక్యాప్ ఇంటర్నేషనల్ ఆర్గనైజేషన్ ఈ రెండు ఆర్గనైజేషన్లు కలిసి ఒక ట్రైనింగ్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ని కండక్ట్ చేస్తున్నాయి అలాగే డిజాస్టర్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ అనేది నాట్ ఓన్లీ ద రెస్పాన్సిబిలిటీ ఆఫ్ స్టేట్ డిజాస్టర్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ అథారిటీ అండ్ రివెన్యూ డిజాస్టర్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ అంటే డిజాస్టర్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ అనేసరికి ఏ స్టేట్ డిజాస్టర్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ అథారిటీ వాళ్ళు చూసుకుంటారు లేకపోతే డిస్టిక్ డిజాస్టర్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ అథారిటీ వాళ్ళు చూసుకుంటారు అనేది కాదు డిజాస్టర్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ అనేది అన్ని డిపార్ట్మెంట్స్కి అన్ని డిపార్ట్మెంట్స్ కలిసి వర్క్ చేస్తేనే మనం సక్సెస్ అవ్వగలుగుతాం నెక్స్ట్ దెర్ ఆర్ సమ్ ఆఫ్ ది global and national framework initiatives in school safety first one is hugo framework for action 2005 to 2015 and then sandai framework for disaster risk reduction 2015 to 2030 i am not going in detail because we have to discuss lot of things to cover these are the frameworks we have we are committed to do committed to do ఇవి నేషన్ గ్లోబల్ అండ్ నేషనల్ ఫ్రేమ్వర్క్ స్కూల్ సేఫ్టీ ఫ్రేమ్వర్క్స్ అండి వీటిని జస్ట్ మనం గుర్తుపెట్టుకోవాలి అంతే నేను ఇన్ డీటెయిల్గా వీటి గురించి చెప్పట్లేదు ఎందుకంటే మనం ఇంకా చాలా స్లైడ్స్ డిస్కస్ చేయాలి ఓకే నెక్స్ట్ వాట్ కెన్ వీ డూ వీ కెన్ డూ లాట్స్ ఆఫ్ స్ట్రక్చరల్ మెజర్స్ నాన్ స్ట్రక్చరల్ మెజర్స్ స్ట్రక్చరల్ మెజర్స్ అనేసరికి ఇన్ఫ్రాస్ట్రక్చర్ రిలేటెడ్ థింగ్స్ నాన్ స్ట్రక్చరల్ మెజర్స్ అనేసరికి పాలసీస్ కెపాసిటీ బిల్డింగ్ ఆల్ దోస్ కమ్స్ అండర్ దిస్ నాన్ స్ట్రక్చరల్ మెజర్స్ మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ది స్టేట్స్ ఆర్ హైలీ వల్నరబుల్ టు సైక్లోన్స్ ఎవ్రీ ఇయర్ ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ వన్ ఆర్ టూ సైక్లోన్స్ ని ఫేస్ చేస్తూ ఉంటుందండి ఇన్ రిలేటెడ్ టు స్కూల్ సేఫ్టీ ఫైర్ హీట్ వేవ్ స్నేక్ బైట్ డ్రౌట్ కెమికల్ హజార్డ్స్ రోడ్ సేఫ్టీ లైటెనింగ్ అండ్ హెల్త్ హజార్డ్స్ దీస్ ఆర్ ద మోస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ప్రయారిటీ ఏరియాస్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు కవర్ నెక్స్ట్ స్కూల్ డిఆర్ఆర్ క్యాలెండర్ డిఆర్ఆర్ మీన్స్ డిజాస్టర్ రిస్క్ రిడక్షన్ స్కూల్స్లో మనకి డిజాస్టర్ రిస్క్ రిడక్షన్ క్యాలెండర్ ఉండిద్దా అండి ఉండదు యాక్టివిటీ క్యాలెండర్ అయితే ఉంటుంది ఐ థింక్ వీ డోంట్ హ్యావ్ దిస్ డిఆర్ఆర్ క్యాలెండర్ ఇన్ స్కూల్స్ వీ హ్యావ్ యాక్టివిటీ క్యాలెండర్ దిస్ ఈజ్ ఆల్సో ఇంపార్టెంట్ సో వీ కెన్ ఇంక్లూడ్ దీస్ ఆస్పెక్ట్స్ ఇన్ టు అవర్ స్కూల్ యాక్టివిటీ క్యాలెండర్ దిస్ ఈజ్ జస్ట్ ఏ ఫార్మేట్ ఐ విల్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ ఇన్ డీటెయిల్ అబౌట్ క్యాలెండర్ మనం స్కూల్స్లో ఇలాంటి డిఆర్ఆర్ క్యాలెండర్ కూడా ఒకటి ఇంక్లూడ్ చేసుకోవాలండి యాక్టివిటీ క్యాలెండర్తో పాటు ఇన్ డీటెయిల్గా నేను చెప్తాను ఈ డిఆర్ఆర్ క్యాలెండర్ ఏమిటి అనేది 
seasonal disaster risk reduction activity calendar means there are lots of seasonal hazards are there example cyclone we know during rainy season june july and heat waves april may konni konni manki seasonal hazards untayi andi june july lo ekkuga manki cyclones vastu untayi vadagalulu avanni manki april may aa time lo vastayi vitannitni manam సైక్లోన్ హజార్డ్స్ అంటాం వీటిని మనం ముందే ఐడెంటిఫై చేస్తాం కదా అందుకని ఆ పీరియడ్కి ముందే మనం ఓరియంటేషన్ టు ట్రైనింగ్ టు టీచర్స్ నాన్ టీచింగ్ స్టాఫ్ అండ్ పీటీఏ పేరెంట్ టీచర్స్ అసోసియేషన్ మెంబర్స్ వాళ్ళందరికీ ఈ సీజనల్ హజార్డ్స్ రాకముందే మనం వాళ్ళ వాళ్ళకి అవేర్నెస్ కల్పించాలన్నమాట బిఫోర్ దట్ వీ మస్ట్ హ్యావ్ నీడ్ టు హ్యావ్ ఎ ప్రిపేర్నెస్ మెజర్స్ కెపాసిటీ బిల్డింగ్ ఓరియంటేషన్ ప్రోగ్రామ్స్ మే maybe some structural measures we need to establish mock exercise all this comes under the seasonal disaster risk reduction calendar ilanti calendar okati manam school lo ganaka implement cheskunte we can mitigate the impacts of disaster if we prepare this kind of calendar to our schools then we we can have a very good resilience to mitigate the impacts of disaster okay టెన్ స్టెప్స్ టువర్డ్స్ స్కూల్ సేఫ్టీ ఓకే స్కూల్ సేఫ్టీలో మనకి మెయిన్గా ఒక టెన్ స్టెప్స్ ఉన్నాయండి ఫస్ట్ వన్ ఓరియంటేషన్ సెన్సిటై సెన్సిటేషన్ ఆఫ్ వర్క్షాప్ ఓరియంటేషన్ అండ్ సెన్సిటేషన్ ఈజ్ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ దస్ట్ వీ మస్ట్ హ్యావ్ ఇన్ వే ఇన్ ఎవ్రీ స్కూల్ మనకి హైకోర్టు కూడా ఆర్డర్స్ ఇచ్చిందండి ఈ అన్ని స్టేట్స్లో ఈచ్ అండ్ ఎవ్రీ స్కూల్లో స్కూల్ సేఫ్టీ అనేది ఒకటి ఇంప్లిమెంట్ చేయాలి అని దాంట్లో ఫస్ట్ వన్ అనేది ఓరియంటేషన్ అండ్ సెన్సిటైజేషన్ అనేది వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ నెక్స్ట్ వన్ ఈజ్ ఫార్మేషన్ ఆఫ్ డిజాస్టర్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ కమిటీ ఈ ఫార్మేషన్ ఆఫ్ డిజాస్టర్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ కమిటీ ఒక్కొక్క స్టెప్ నేను ఇన్ డీటెయిల్గా నెక్స్ట్ స్లైడ్స్లో ఐ విల్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ ఓకే నెక్స్ట్ హజార్డ్ వల్నరబిలిటీ రిస్క్ కెపాసిటీ అనాలిసిస్ హజార్డ్ అంటే ఏంటి వల్నరబిలిటీ అంటే ఏంటి రిస్క్ అంటే ఏంటి డే వన్ ట్రైనింగ్ ప్రోగ్రామ్లో మనకి రంజన్ సార్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ చేశారు నిన్న బాలు సార్ ఆల్సో ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ అబౌట్ వాట్ ఈస్ హజార్డ్ వాట్ ఈస్ వల్నరబిలిటీ వాట్ ఈస్ రిస్క్ ఓకే దెన్ స్కూల్ డిజాస్టర్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ ప్లాన్ బేస్డ్ ఆన్ స్టెప్ వన్ స్టెప్ టూ అండ్ స్టెప్ త్రీ వీ కెన్ ప్రిపేర్ ఎ స్కూల్ డిజాస్టర్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ ప్లాన్ అండ్ దెన్ ఫార్మేషన్ అండ్ స్కిల్ డెవలప్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ డిఎం టీమ్స్ కెపాసిటీ బిల్డింగ్ ఆఫ్ టీచర్స్ స్టూడెంట్స్ పేరెంట్స్ అండ్ స్టాఫ్ రెగ్యులర్ మార్క్ ఎక్సర్సైజ్ structural mitigation measures resource inventory evaluation and updation of updating of dm plan ivanni manki school safety lo main 10 steps andi okay through these 10 steps we can definitely make the school safer environment for children okay next is safety audits safety audit formats are there i will share after this presentation this is the suggested committee including principal vice principal physical education teacher representative for, uh, from panchayati raj representative nearest to fire station representative nearest to police station already i told you na in disaster management convergence between the department is very very important oka vela manike emaina fire accident akkadaithe mana teachers emaina cheyagalugutarandi em cheyagalu em cheyaledu fire department e raavali ఏమైనా హెల్త్ రిలేటెడ్ ఇష్యూస్ ఉన్నప్పుడు టీచర్స్ కానీ నాన్ టీచింగ్ స్టాఫ్ కానీ ఏమైనా చేయగలుగుతారా చేయలేదు హెల్త్ డిపార్ట్మెంటే రావాలి దట్స్ వై కన్వర్జేషన్ బిట్వీన్ ద డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఈజ్ మోస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఈ స్కూల్ డిజాస్టర్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ కమిటీలో వీళ్ళందరూ ఉంటారన్నమాట హెడ్ ఆఫ్ ది ఫస్ట్ ఎయిడ్ టీమ్ హెడ్ ఆఫ్ ది సెర్చ్ అండ్ రెస్క్యూ టీమ్ హెడ్ ఆఫ్ ది ఇవాక్యుయేషన్ టీమ్ హెడ్ ఆఫ్ ది సైక్ సెక్యూరిటీ టీమ్ హెడ్ ఆఫ్ ది ట్రాన్స్పోర్ట్ టీమ్ హెడ్ ఆఫ్ ది ఫైర్ సేఫ్టీ టీమ్ ఓకే school disaster management plan basically school disaster management plan having two points two parts preparedness and response plan and hazard identification mundu identify cheskoni manam em em precautions tisukovali response plan ante tarvata after disaster hazard identification lo structural assessment non structural assessment 
రీసోర్సింగ్ అండ్ స్ట్రక్చరల్ అసెస్మెంట్ అంటే నేను ఆల్రెడీ చెప్పాను అది ఇన్ఫ్రాస్ట్రక్చర్ రిలేటెడ్ నాన్ స్ట్రక్చరల్ అంటే కెపాసిటీ బిల్డింగ్ ఓరియంటేషన్ ట్రైనింగ్ అవన్నీ రీసోర్స్ ఇన్వెంటరీ నెక్స్ట్ కమింగ్ స్లైడ్స్లో చెప్తాను నెక్స్ట్ రెస్పాన్స్ ప్లాన్ మిటిగేషన్ ఆఫ్ హజార్డ్ ఐడెంటిఫైడ్ ఇవాక్యుయేషన్ ప్లాన్ స్పెషల్ ప్రొవిజన్స్ ఫర్ డిఫరెంట్లీ ఏబుల్ ఆల్రెడీ మ్యామ్ ఇప్పుడు డిస్కస్ చేశారు కదా హజార్డ్ వన్నరబిలిటీ రిస్క్ కెపాసిటీ అనాలిసిస్ ఇది ఎలా చేస్తారో చూద్దాం This is the checklist for Hazard Hunt. First one, we have to discuss disaster management plan with our teacher and classmates. Then we have identified possible disasters that can affect our school and surroundings. When we have a small school, there is a small school in the cyclone prone area, there is a flood area, there is a flood area, ఎర్త్ కేక్ ఎక్కువగా ఉన్న ప్రాంతంలో ఉందా హీట్ వేవ్స్ ఎక్కువగా ఉందా లేకపోతే ఇండస్ట్రియల్స్ ఇండస్ట్రీస్ ఎక్కువగా ఉన్న ప్రాంతంలో ఉందా ప్రాబబిలిటీ ఆఫ్ అకరెన్స్ హై మీడియం లో అనేది మనం ఒక మ్యాప్ ఒక డేటా లాగా ముందే మనం తీసుకొని పెట్టుకోవాలన్నమాట అండ్ దెన్ హజార్డస్ ఫ్యాక్టరీస్ ఆ స్కూల్ కి నియర్ బై ఎనీ హజార్డస్ ఫ్యాక్టరీస్ ఉన్నాయా లేదా బిజీ అక్కడ స్కూల్ లొకేషన్ దగ్గర బిజీ రోడ్స్ ఏమైనా ఉన్నాయా నియర్ బై అక్కడ అంటే కొంతమంది పిల్లలు విల్ కమ్ బై బస్ ఆటో రిక్షా సమ్ సమ్ స్టూడెంట్స్ విల్ కమ్ టు స్కూల్ బై బోట్స్ ఆల్సో ఇఫ్ దే నో హౌ టు స్విమ్ ఇట్ విల్ బి ఓకే అదర్వైజ్ ఇట్ మే కాజ్ డిజాస్టర్ దిస్ ఈస్ ద చెక్ లిస్ట్ ఫర్ క్లాస్ రూమ్ అక్కడ ఉన్న మనకి ఎమర్జెన్సీ కంట్రోల్ రూమ్ స్టేట్ లెవెల్ డిస్టిక్ లెవెల్ మండల్ లెవెల్ అండ్ హెల్ప్ లైన్స్ లోకల్ హాస్పిటల్ నియరెస్ట్ కెమిస్ట్ ఫైర్ స్టేషన్ పోలీస్ స్టేషన్ ఇవన్నీ డేటా అంతా మనము ఈ చెక్ లిస్ట్ లో స్కూల్లో మనం యాడ్ చేసుకొని ఉంచుకోవాలి ఓకే నెక్స్ట్ సేఫ్టీ ఆడిట్ సమ్ ఆఫ్ ది సేఫ్టీ ఆడిట్స్ ఆర్ సజెస్టెడ్ బిలో విచ్ కెన్ బి డన్ ఇన్ కన్సల్టేషన్ విత్ వేరియస్ ఏజెన్సీస్ ఫస్ట్ వన్ ఈస్ బిల్డింగ్ ఆడిట్ ఇట్ కెన్ బి డన్ విత్ ద హెల్ప్ ఆఫ్ పిడబ్ల్యూ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆర్ ఆర్ఎన్బి అండ్ ఎంఏయూడి లోకల్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ కాలేజెస్ ఎక్సెట్రా బిల్డింగ్ ఆడిట్ అనేది మనకి ఎవరు చేస్తారండి పబ్లిక్ వర్క్స్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ కానీ రోడ్స్ అండ్ బిల్డింగ్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్స్ కానీ మున్సిపల్ అడ్మినిస్ట్రేషన్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ కానీ స్కూల్ సేఫ్టీ సేఫ్టీ కింద ఇవన్నీ బిల్డింగ్ ఆడిట్స్ నెక్స్ట్ ఫైర్ సేఫ్టీ ఇట్ కెన్ బి డన్ విత్ ద హెల్ప్ ఆఫ్ లోకల్ ఫైర్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ డిఫరెంట్ ఫైర్ ఎక్స్టింగ్ విషయర్స్కి రీఫిల్లింగ్ డేట్స్ డిఫరెంట్ డిఫరెంట్గా ఉంటాయి అనమాట ఈ ఫైర్ ఫిల్లింగ్ ఎవరు చేస్తారు ఫైర్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ వాళ్ళు చేస్తారు నెక్స్ట్ మిడ్ డే మీల్ ఇన్స్పెక్షన్ సివిల్ సప్లైస్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ వాళ్ళు మిడ్ డే మీల్ ఇన్స్పెక్షన్ చేస్తారు నెక్స్ట్ వాటర్ అండ్ శానిటేషన్ ఆడిట్ దిస్ కెన్ బి డన్ బై ద హెల్ప్ ఆఫ్ రూరల్ వాటర్ సప్లై అండ్ శానిటేషన్ నవ్ ఏ డేస్ ఇట్ ఈస్ మోస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఇన్ స్కూల్స్ బికాస్ మన ఏపీ గవర్నమెంట్లో ఎవ్రీడే స్కూల్స్లో టర్బిడిటీ అనేది చెక్ చేయాలని మా మ్యాండేటరీ చేశారండి నెక్స్ట్ ఎలక్ట్రికల్ సేఫ్టీ ఆడిట్ ఇట్ కెన్ బి డన్ విత్ ద హెల్ప్ ఆఫ్ ఎలక్ట్రిసిటీ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఓకే
Let's see that um, checklist is there. Uh, inspection of midday meal food every month. And washroom inspection every month. Inspection of drinking water safety every month. Fire safety audit once in a year. Electricity audit once in a year. Building audit once in three years. Uh, this is the time fair frame for different audits. Okay. Next, task forces. Search and rescue team, first aid team, evacuation team, transport team, uh, site security team, fire safety team. At least if we can prepare these task forces, including teachers, non-teaching staff and parents also. School safety and edi only teachers ki, children's ki and non-teaching staff ki matra mein kaadandi. Parents ki goda must tend to it. Appadu matra mein e school safety and edi man than school safety and edi man of success shay galu tam. This is the suggested structure. Incident commander. Uh, he is the topmost position. Hai mana ki a institute lo ever aite higher authority untaro. Walu incident commander ga untaro. Under this, these categories will come. Uh, if the incident is at mandal level, then mandal officer. If district level, then district officer. If it is in state level, then relief commissioner will come comes under. Okay. Search and rescue team means fire department will comes under this search and rescue team. Okay. Um, we can also ask support from DDMA also. District Disaster Management Authority. Uh, every state lo SDRF ani baka team unta randi. State Disaster Responsive Force ani. Wala dekhe well trained persons unta ru. Wala ni mana battalion santa mu. Mana district lo gani ekade na yeh maina incident happen na ite mana wala help gora tis kuch. Next first aid team, medical and health team, evacuation team. Uh, you can club with fire and police department. Transport management team, uh, transport team, and site security team, police. Uh, these are the basic information about task forces. What is resource inventory? Each and every school key resource inventory map and the must and should go on down and uh, list of resources available out, outside school campus within within the 5 km list of resources available within the school campus and it should them first one is the resource map must include the following features material resources such as fire extinguishers rope uh, first aid box etc all available within the school premises nearest available resources such as fire station hospital primary health care center police station civil defense office even ni man ki Local resource map ga man petko wali man ki nearest to fire station name on the hospital name on the police station name on the even ni which is a key man ki resource map lo was thai next to school physical map number of classrooms in the school number of staff rooms principal and vice principal room toilets and others various labs such as physics chemistry biology and computer playground and open spaces in the bottom school physical map if any incident happens in our school oka sudden ga oka fire department gaani evaraina ochinappudu manam ee physical map anedi vallaki isthe inka thwaraga manaki akada recover cheyataniki chances unnai andukani resource map and school physical map anedi manaki chaala avasaram resource inventory next evacuation map Each and every school lo, e evacuation map and compulsory undal and mock drills go to chase the undali pillar kiman. Resource e assembling area and the incident jerry in a pudu pillar landaru e assembling area lo, wall landaru. Uh, Gather a yet at two manum, Waldotom, mock drifts change alanamata. 
ఇలా మాక్ డ్రిల్స్ చేయించడం వల్ల ఏమైందంటే ఏమైనా ఇన్సిడెంట్ జరిగినప్పుడు పిల్లలందరూ ఇక్కడికి వచ్చినప్పుడు టీచర్స్కి పిల్లలు హెడ్ టు హెడ్ కౌంట్ ఉంటుంది ఎంతమంది వచ్చారు ఎంతమంది రాలేదు అని ఉంటుంది అందుకని ఈచ్ అండ్ ఎవ్రీ స్కూల్లో మాక్ డ్రిల్స్ అనేది మస్ట్ అండ్ షుడ్ డూస్ డోన్స్ స్కూల్స్లో మనం చిన్న చిన్న కార్టూన్స్ పెట్టి సైక్లోన్ వచ్చినప్పుడు ఎర్త్ క్లైక్ వచ్చినప్పుడు ఏమేం డూస్ డోన్స్ చేయాలి అనేవి మనం డిస్ప్లే చేస్తే దే మే బి ఫెమిలియర్ ఓకే సైక్లోన్ డూస్ డోన్స్ ఇలా ఇవన్నీ మనం కార్టూన్స్ ప్రింట్అవుట్స్ తీసి స్కూల్స్లో క్లాస్ రూమ్స్లో డిస్ప్లే చేస్తే పిల్లలు రోజు చూస్తూ ఉంటారు వాళ్ళకి కొంచెం ఐడియా వచ్చింది అనమాట సైక్లోన్ వచ్చినప్పుడు ఏం డూస్ డోన్స్ నెక్స్ట్ ఎర్త్ కేక్ డూస్ డోన్స్ ఫ్లడ్ డూస్ డోన్స్ ఫైర్ సైక్లోన్ ఎర్త్ కేక్ ఫ్లడ్ ఫైర్ లైటనింగ్ ల్యాండ్ స్లైడ్ ఇవన్నీ చిన్న చిన్న కార్టూన్స్ లాగా ఇలా డిస్ప్లే చేయాలన్నమాట స్కూల్స్ నెక్స్ట్ స్కూల్ బస్ సేఫ్టీ హ్యాండ్ బుక్ ఈచ్ అండ్ ఎవ్రీ స్కూల్లో మస్ట్ మెయింటైన్ ది స్కూల్ బస్ సేఫ్టీ హ్యాండ్ బుక్ చూడండి పిల్లవాడు స్కూల్కి ఎలా వెళ్తున్నాడు మన ఏపీలో అయితే మెయిన్గా ఆటోల్లో చిన్న పిల్లలని మోర్ దాన్ ఫోర్టీన్ మెంబర్స్ అలా కూర్చోబెట్టి పంపిస్తూ ఉంటారు స్కూల్స్కి దీస్ ఆర్ ది ఇన్సిడెంట్స్ ప్రకాశం డిస్టిక్లో అండి సెకండ్ మార్చ్ టూ థౌజండ్ సెవెంటీన్లో థర్టీ స్టూడెంట్స్ ఇంజ్యూర్డ్ అండ్ ట్వంటీ ఫైవ్ చిల్డ్రన్ ఇంజ్యూర్డ్ యాజ్ స్కూల్ బస్ స్కిడ్స్ ఆఫ్ రోడ్ ఇన్ హిమాచల్ ప్రదేశ్ నెక్స్ట్ ఫార్టీ స్టూడెంట్స్ ఇంజ్యూర్డ్ ఇన్ బస్ యాక్సిడెంట్ ఇన్ ఉత్తర్ ప్రదేశ్ దీస్ ఆర్ ఆల్ ద ఇన్సిడెంట్స్ నెక్స్ట్ హిమాచల్ ప్రదేశ్ థర్టీ ఇంక్లూడింగ్ ట్వంటీ సెవెన్ కిడ్స్ కిల్డ్ ఇన్ స్కూల్ బస్ యాక్సిడెంట్ నైన్త్ ఏప్రిల్ టూ థౌజండ్ ఎయిటీన్ we will see some of the international scenarios also september 2000 september 2021 september 21 in 1990 uh, taiwan lo andi earth cake lo total 700 schools national wide national wide were damaged okay may 12th in 2008 student in death of 19000 students and destructions of destruction of about 7000 schools december 7 1988 america uh, arnia earthquake thousands of school children killed including 400 at an elementary school may 10 1997 ardakul earthquake 102 110 స్కిల్ దివాలి ఫైర్ ఇన్ హర్యానా ఓవర్ ఫోర్ హండ్రెడ్ పీపుల్ నియర్లీ హాఫ్ ఆఫ్ దెమ్ ఆర్ స్టూడెంట్స్ వర్ బర్న్ అలవ్ ఇన్ స్కూల్ అవార్డ్ సెరిమనీ ఇన్ టూ థౌజండ్ వన్ బుజ్ హెర్త్ కేక్ ఇన్ గుజరాత్ ఎ టోటల్ ఆఫ్ థర్టీ వన్ టీచర్స్ అండ్ నైన్ హండ్రెడ్ అండ్ సెవెంటీ వన్ స్టూడెంట్ in 2004 kumbakonam 94 children burned to death while 18 others were seriously injured in 2005 devastating earthquake in jammu and kashmir 19000 children died and widespread collapse of school buildings ivanni konni న్యూస్ పేపర్ ఆర్టికల్స్ అండి ఇన్ సూరత్ కోచింగ్ సెంటర్ ఫైవ్ సూరత్ కోచింగ్ సెంటర్ ఫైవ్ ట్వంటీ స్టూడెంట్స్ కిల్డ్ సమ్ ఫెల్ టు డెత్ ఇప్పుడు మనకి కోచింగ్ సెంటర్స్ అంటే ఎలా ఉంటాయండి చిన్న చిన్న రూమ్స్లో కోచింగ్ సెంటర్స్ పెట్టి చెప్తూ ఉంటారు అక్కడ ఎటువంటి ప్రికాషన్స్ ఏమి ఉండవు అన్నమాట నెక్స్ట్ నోయిడా టూ స్టూడెంట్స్ డెడ్ ఫైవ్ ఇంజ్యూర్డ్ 
in Salapur school wall collapse. One year back, Visakapatnam Lon Kuntandi, Waka Anganwadi school low, Waka Goda Padipoi, Waka Chin Anganwadi school of Chadu Nechina, Papa, five years Papa Chenipo in the Mana Andhra Pradesh. Six children driver killed as school bus falls into in Himachal Pradesh. 85 students fall ill after eating midday meal in Bihar school. Even if you paper incidents, next UNICEF estimates that of 8.8 .8 lakh children due to COVID 19 in South Asia, maximum from India. UNICEF and United Nations Emergency. United Nations Child Emergency Fund and it is 8.8 lakhs of children in Peru. Most of the children are from India. Moral of the story is safety is not a state of mind. Safety doesn't happen by accident. It happens by best practices. Hence, school bus safety handbook is needed of the hour each and every school of school bus safety book and any implement chayalandi next objective to develop a road hazard analysis protocols and procedures main objective in tandi e school bus safety di, school home nunchi school ki vache varuku a velo hazardous we amina companies gani amina hazardous we identify chesi manavaka uh, road hazard analysis protocols and we develop chess kuni manam avi transport department walaki send chess the walu kuni implement chess the run matter a handbook contents lo ma mundali uh, standard requirement for buses mntv bus golden color loan dali uh, uh, details mention chayali next emergency exit provision undali seat belts undali and the low each and every school nunchi a bus coordinator oka lu undalandi a bus coordinator plus transport department kalsi um, state inspection programs and ex existing inspection procedures vallu well trained coordinators undi vallu inspection cheyalandi a bus ki next hierarchy of controlling exposure hazards konni hazards manamu Physical ga remove chayuchu. Physical removing hazards. Ante ibudu mano uh, well school ke well thunna route baago le dan kundi. Then we can change the route. Apur manam inko route nunchi uh, school ke well lachan mata. That means mano physical ga vaka hazard ni remove ches thunam. Okay. Even ni hierarchy of controlling exposure hazards. Ivi danga manam uh, road hazard analysis ane di. Choose Kovali and a risk ranking hazard types. I area low uh, risk ranking each one to MM hazardous types. Sunayo choose Kovali. In the Mana Andhra Pradesh State Disaster Management Walu, a roadmap way serendi starting point um, signals good. Next, we have hazard types and the most slope, road, and risk ranking medium, unda, high, and we will choose the road hazard analysis. This is the innovative unique technology and the per school bus. Okay, thank you. Balu sir, yes, ma'am. Am I audible to you, ma'am? Yes, sir. Ma audible, sir. Yeah, tell me, ma'am. If the session is over, yes, sir. Over, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, now I may request the participants, if you're having any questions, you may please uh, post in the chat box.
I'm just looking to the chat box if there is any question we may take. Participants say the person who will take chat box. <clears throat> Dear participants, if you are having any questions, you may please post in the chat box. Any questions from participant side? Um, Mr. Mervin, are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, some participants are requesting you definitely this year we are going to conduct training program for students also. So we will be uh, taking the same sessions to the students. Whoever need you may approach us. Now, Mr. Mervin will explain the process of uh, downloading your certificate but uh, your certificate will be available tomorrow only not today so today uh, after completing the program when we change the status you will get the certificate tomorrow now uh, mr mervin will explain the process of receiving your uh, once again registration as well as receiving the certificate he will explain the process after that we can go for a validity over to you mervin yeah sure sir Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Nirmona registered here, Kada uh, NIDM portal. Lo, and registered when you are, Malli Oxari registered when you. Adi puru afternoon two work ke uh, available ko onto ni. After that close just tamu. Okay. Uh, Oxari me uh, me logi nai the. Andlo me ko onto Oxari na screen share just tamu chodani. मेरे कड़ा मन्ना लॉगिन नहीं है रुका था एनआईडीएम ट्रेनिंग पोर्टल लो मलिक ऑक्सर इपुर लॉगिन नहीं ना तरवा था मेरे कड़ा मेरे डिटेल सेंटर चेयर्स उन्होंने इधी ओनली लॉगिन अंडे रजिस्टर इन वाले क मात्र में रजिस्टर आपनी वालो ये आफ्टरनून टू लोपो रजिस्टर बन्दी लेकर पोते मेरे को सर्टिफिकेट आने रिस्ट रहना वालों इकड़ में यूज़र ने मोना में रिचना ईमेल आईडी एंड सेम पासवर्ड इकड़ में रेंटर चेस को ने अकड़ा इकड़ लॉगिन आवाली इकड़ लॉगिन है ना तरवाता इकड़ आमी को एनरोल्ड इवेंट्स में क्लिक चाहिए एनरोल्ड इवेंट्स में क्लिक चेस ना का इकड़ में को स्टार्ट कोर्स है निकड़ेगा � ये फीडबैक फॉर्म नहीं सबमिट मेरे क्लिक चेसी सबमिट चेयर्स होते हैं दांत लोग उनका क्वेश्चंस के आंसर चेसी सबमिट चेयर ले सबमिट चेस ना विदिन थ्री थ्री टू फोर आवर्स लो मेरे को सर्टिफिकेट जनरेट होते हैं आदि टू रेपे जनरेट होते हैं ये वाला जनरेट आप दो सो आफ्टरनून टू लो पु मेरे को मेरे थ्री डेज कोर्स अटेंड है ना रेस्ट आप वर आप अपनी पक्षन लो मेरे सर्टिफिकेट डाउनलोड चेस को ले रहे हो ओके मेरे को रजिस्ट्रेशन लो ये अपना प्रॉब्लम उन्हें यू कैन पोस्ट इन द चैट बॉक्स थैंक यू सनी एंड्स मैम अधिति मैम एस जॉइन Any ma'am, Ms. Aditi ma'am has joined. I can't see her. Uh, let me just check. Okay, because we are going to end the program. Uh, we are going to begin the valedictory. That's why. Yeah, yeah. I'll just check. Uh, please let me know. Ma yeah. Uh, once again, very good afternoon to all the participants. I hope you all enjoyed this three days training program on child-centric disaster risk reduction. Now we are at the end of this program. 
now i may request a uh, few participants to share your oral feedback those who want to share your feedback you may raise your hand mr mervin will uh, unmute you and you can share your feedback andar ka ardham ainda who is sharing here please avoid sharing i request the participants do not share anything um uh mr mervin a few people are raising the hands please unmute them so that they can uh, share their feedback sure sir uh you can go one by one first there is ganga sri and sri devi so one by one there are five people have raised their hand you may please uh, unmute them miss ganga sri you may unmute yourself Ganga Sri, ma'am. Now you may unmute yourself and you can share your feedback about this three days program. There is some background noise from somebody else. Marvin, someone is sharing. Mervin, somebody is sharing their screen. Please stop that. And uh, how you are unmuting the participants? Still, it is not unmuted. Mervin, are you there? And the Kenyan Karachi is going to come to Ravatla. Sir, the medium chair pitch for our leader. Yes. Miss Gangasri, you may talk now. Uh, Mervin, there is a person. Uh, Badugu Vengadeswar Rao's mic is unmuted. Please. Uh... Yes, sir. Sir, uh... yes. sir Vengadeswar Rao, you may share your feedback if you want. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Trader Finance, Kala Bhavan, sir. Uh, last law. Uh, yes, sir. 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 Hello. 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 are you hearing me? Yes, sir. What do you need to do is please, uh, allow attendees to unmute themselves. Remove the tick mark. Don't allow attendees to unmute themselves. Yes, yes, sir. Only Badgu Venkateswaro is a. Uh, uh, Give me a voice. Yes, sir. Three days program, Chala Bond, sir. I am Badgu Venkateswaro. Last one, Ajay Madamgar, Chala. Hello. 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 Mr. Mervin. Mervin, yes, sir. Whoever want to speak, please make them as your co-host. Once their role is done, immediately remove the co-host role. If okay. you allow all the participants to unmute themselves, again the platform will be disturbed. Ardha okay. Mainda. Okay, sir. Um, don't allow attendees to unmute themselves. You okay. just make them as your co-host so that they can unmute. They will speak after they completed their speech. And immediately remove the co-host role. Yeah, sure. Be uh, alert. Uh, work on the instruction. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can go one by one. Uh, first, Mode uh, Sevakumar Naik, you may um, talk now. Please make co-host. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, please. Sir, could uh, login Nayaka start for central chess and take a login error or something. Sir, we are asking your feedback, right? The program Gurunji feedback came on day, other chapandi. We came problem day, that only three, four times, manam a demo chase amu. Okay, now this program Gurunji feedback came on day, chapandi. Thank you, sir. Program all three days program kind of bound, sir. It is a little bit of a taste for Namu. It is a little bit of a chase program, kind of bound, sir. Okay, next participant. Anybody else? 
we want a concrete feedback be specific what did you learn from this uh, three days training and what you are going to do as an action point and what we need to improve in this training program so if you give some specific uh, feedback it would be much better ganga sri maybe uh, next Uh, Ms. Ganga Sri, you may talk now. Uh, Ms. Ganga Sri, please unmute yourself and speak. Ms. Ganga Sri. Um, okay, you can move on to the next person. Uh, Ms. Yen Sri Devi, you may talk now. You may give your feedback. Ms. Yen Sri Devi? Are people who want to give your feedback turn on your video? Based on that, we will unmute. I think many people have raised their hand, but they are not uh, uh, unmuting themselves and they are not sharing their feedback. Hello, good afternoon, sir. M. Sri Devi. Yes, Chapandi, ma'am. Three days to classes, which are born, sir. Home to home school, and a Anganwadi school, local children, or Dexter India, and school buildings are a problem, sir. Classes at the bar, nice sir. Okay, thank you. Classes are disabled Gurinchi Chalabaga Chaparu. The inflow conchum school service shabby and the pillar and tea skeletonica can help us clear and jeppesi. Pillar and tea skeletonica ever rabbit late, sir. Disabled children, Sinti Skeletonki, Akanunchi helpers who provide Chayet Ledu, Pillalu, Chalaban integrate on to. Okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next to me, sir. Uh, I think uh, but is raising hand. People who are on their video, you may make them. Marvin. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, yeah, so the ma'am is raising hand. You can give a chance. So Kontiana, I saw yeah, so the. Uh, Ma'am, you may unmute yourself. Uh, Ma'am, you can give uh, your feedback now. Ms. Konya, uh, Yasoda, ma'am. Yes, sir, please unmute yourself and speak. Me my can't chase Kondi. Still you are muted. Hello. Hello, sir. Am I audible to you, sir? Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Hello? You are audible, uh, please. Uh, three days please. training. Three days training. Chala bondi, sir. Hello. Chappandi, ma'am. Meer continue chaindi. Matla dendi. Sir, three days training and chala. Hello. 
Ich Please speak. Matlaran ni ma'am. Maybe network issue, sir. Yeah, I think. Uh, Mr. K. Sadhya Narayan, sir, would you like to speak? You can raise your hand uh, physically. Sadhya Narayan, sir, who is on his video. Do you want to speak, sir? If you want to speak, you may raise your hand. Yeah, uh, Mervin, you can please uh, give a host host to him. Mervin, you may speak now. Mr. K. Sadhya Narayan. I will talk to you next time. Imandi Sunita, would you like to speak? Soda, ma'am. Mike is on. If you want, you can speak. Good morning, sir. Chapandi, ma'am. Uh, sir, actually, the uh, being a part of the session, I'm very much um, feeling as pleasure, sir. And this three days program is uh, very nice because uh, we are having a lot of problems like uh, disability persons and uh, natural disasters like that. So uh, we don't know actually exactly what we have to do for those disasters. Uh, we are simply uh, affecting with the uh, disasters. But uh, however, we can escape uh, by having all the parts uh, are good for us. But uh, handicapped people, they don't know how to escape from that situations and they don't know how to uh, be uh, preventive for that, how to take preventive measures uh, in that situations. So uh, being a part of this session, somewhat we can give some motivation to those people and uh, we can give some uh, advices to the people and also we can overcome that situations. Be, uh, of course, not all, but some uh, some sort of situations we can overcome, I think, sir. So thank you very much for this wonderful session, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, ma'am, for your feedback. Anybody else uh, want to give your feedback? Uh, Miss Any Ants, ma'am, uh, Aditi, ma'am has joined or will be available. She will be available or not? She has joined. She joined. The, she was trying to join the. Uh, platform was showing full, but she joins. Mr. Mervin, uh, Miss Aditi Ghost, ma'am, has joined. Yeah, thank you. Made. Now let us go on to the uh, Valdic tree. So once again, a warm welcome to all the participants and dignitaries. Um, so hope you all enjoyed this three days training program uh, with various sessions on uh, child centric disaster risk reduction. Now I may invite uh, Ms. Atiti Kos, who is a country manager for Handicap International, uh, Humanitarian Inclusion. Uh, I welcome her to deliver a valedictory address. Over to you, ma'am. Aditi, ma'am, over to you. You may unmute yourself and speak. Good afternoon, everyone. I think it's so much pleasure to come back and then again talk to you. After three days of training, I was listening to this valedictory. I missed some in the beginning because the platform was showing full, so I was unable to join, but I could hear. Some of this was in Telugu. My Telugu vocabulary is a little weak, but still I could got most of it. <laughs> So it, uh, I, I understand some of the challenges, uh, you know, with this COVID, uh, we are trying to adapt ourselves and trying to do all this training online. This is giving us opportunity being in a remote corner also to participate and learn. That's a very positive thing. But at the same time, I do understand there will be technology challenge, some network challenge. We are trying to be patient. Uh, and understand and still try to communicate effectively. Uh, also, probably nothing like big face-to-face, -face, knowing each other. We miss that part. 
but nevertheless we have to take the maximum benefit of the situation and uh, i think uh, a three days course for six hours is surely is not enough to equip you totally how to do a inclusive uh, program how to do the preparedness how to we can't uh, it's very difficult to equip because it takes time the whole purpose of this training was so that you understand you acknowledge that there are uh, specific need for children and the children is not a homogeneous group there are children of various age group children are of various gender children with or without disability and they have a various need so when you uh, plan for any program on day to day basis or plan for anything during a disaster or preparedness for the disaster the whole idea is that you ask questioning that if i do this can all the children do that if i if i am delivering for example this covid we have shared lot of awareness messages across but our awareness messages was uh, in the tv radio what happens to a uh, dumb and deaf children how they get the information how you are making sure that their caregiver have the information or making our communication uh, in such a way so that it reaches them so the whole idea is that uh, just keep this in mind continuously in your day to day work what you are doing just to ensure the way you are doing it is it inclusive it is going to reach everybody is everybody going to benefit it is anybody going to get excluded uh, so that's if that has been achieved and that sensitization and that awareness is achieved i will say that this training program is excellent and there are some of the experience some of the tools some of the ways has been shared and i'm sure from handicap international side we can say if you need um, specifically more uh, like any tools any guidance how to work with person with disability children with disability will be more than happy to work with you to guide you to support you and also nidm is there so if you have uh, need more training on any specific areas which is more relevant to your department uh, of course you can make that request and i am sure in idm is planning a series of training program and some of this uh, request probably will be accommodated or probably those of the training is already planned you just need to know that those training are happening in nidm i think you have already registered in the platform so you can see what are the various trainings are planned uh, uh, i would say that yes uh, this is a good way to connect and to give some information but at the same time probably there were some challenges uh, which we are learning from each training and we'll try to improve with the process to do more uh, what we are looking for that uh, any time if you want to reach us even in the chat box if you have any very specific suggestion you can continue to give us when this validity session is in progress my the message uh, to you here will be that whichever department you are working i know there are a lot of challenges and not many infrastructure we have not many resources we have and that calls for a lot of creativity how we can ensure within this still we are trying to include and involve everyone so keep your creative mind on try to think always that how we overcome some of the challenges and how you are going to reach and i am very very happy to see working with various with the schools uh, working with the various department everybody we even with the limited resource always trying to find the solutions for the problem and the covid has also taught us like how to think on your feet and find a solution adapt ourselves so continue to do so if you need some uh, i am sure uh, in idm will share some of the presentation and training material uh, for your future reference so continue to do so and i think we will have all our contact contact details so don't hesitate to reach out to us one training is not enough but that's a good beginning so let us do this good beginning and let's work towards a uh, response is work towards a development program which is inclusive
thank you and all the best to all of you over to you uh, thank you so much aditi ma'am for uh, once again joining with us even in your busy schedule and given your lot of insights to our participants and definitely it's uh, just a beginning and this year we will be uh, uh, conducting series of training program and we are also looking forward to collaborate with you uh, uh, for a technical collaboration as well as for conducting large number of training programs thank you so much ma'am for your valuable participation and uh, now um, i may invite uh, ms nasia saik for uh, delivering a vote of thanks thank you sir it my privilege to propose a vote of thanks i extend my gratitude and thanks to major general manoj kumar bindal executive director nidm and then thanks to sri professor santosh kumar director of nidm ccdrr center and then thanks to aditi ghosh ma'am country manager handicap international and then uh, thanks to dr kumar raka program officer nidm ccdrr center for his continuous anonymous support and guidance and then thanks to program coordinator dr balu sir and uh, anni ma'am and then uh, ranjan sir also and uh, thanks to mervin for perfect logistic support and uh, i sincerely thank each and every participant for gracing this webinar on all five day three days with gracious presence thank you everyone thank you adit ma'am and thank you anians ma'am from an idm side thank you so much thank you thank you so much thank you everyone for conducting this wonderful training all the best to all the participants thank you have a nice weekend thank you ma'am